Once you get the WP eCommerce plugin activated, you have an operational shopping cart. If you add a product, you'll be able to add it to the cart and actually complete the checkout. But until you've made a few decisions and activated a few buttons, the plugin will not be very functional. There are a few settings that should be made even before you start entering any products or configuring the store. The first step would be to set the permalink structure for the store. A permalink is the permanent URL or link to a site entry. Permalinks are what search engines use to help determine the relevancy of the site in a search. You want the permalinks to speak to the search engines and to a visitor so they understand what you have. Setting this now will prevent any broken links later. WordPress by default uses web URLs which have question marks and numbers in the URL. To change this structure, navigate to the Settings panel and the Permalink sub-panel. You can choose one of the default settings or you can use a custom setting. One popular custom setting is Category Post Name. This will change the URL from one that looks like this to one that looks like this, which is easier to understand and to make sense of. Enter this information and click the Save Changes button. The next step would be to move the store theme files. These are not the same as the WordPress theme files. These are the theme files for the store only. Moving these to a different location will help prevent losing any information because of any automatic upgrade made to the WP eCommerce plugin. Automatic upgrades have been disabled until this step has been done. Fortunately, this is an easy process and can be done with a few clicks. Navigate to Store, Settings, Presentation. On the right is a box titled Theme Customization. Click on the Move Your Files link and this will move the Store Theme files to a new location in the Uploads folder. This will prevent any WP eCommerce upgrades from overwriting your files. The box will then give you the location of the move files and brief instructions for creating a new theme for customizing the appearance of the store. For now, we'll be using one of the default store themes. Now that we have done that, we can start configuring the store and adding products. If you have a WordPress theme that you want to use, then activate it now. We're using the Crafty Cart WordPress theme since it was designed specifically for the WP eCommerce plugin. To install the Crafty Cart, navigate to Appearance, Themes, and click on the Install Themes tab. Type in Crafty Cart in the search box and click the Search button. Click on the Install selection and the Install Now button. Then activate the theme. Now that we have the theme, we'll configure some basic location, tax, and shipping information. WP eCommerce installs a Store panel in the Admin panel of WordPress. Navigate to Store Settings. The first tab is labeled General and have the configuration information for the basic country, tax, and currency information. The first option settings is the base country. This is the country where the store is located. This is needed for tax and checkout information. Select your country from the drop-down menu. This will automatically update when a selection is made. You may need to select a state, province, or region depending on your country. Next, fill in the tax information for your country. This line will change depending on the country you have selected. For instance, the tax table for the United States is 50 states plus Washington, D.C., for a total of 51 regions, while other countries will only have one tax field. Australia, for instance, only has the one tax field to enter. The target market needs to be selected. If you're only selling in one country, then click on None and then find the country and check the box. If you're selling to all countries, then click All. You can also uncheck any country you're not selling to. Next, set the currency type. This is the currency of the base country. This will determine the currency passed to your payment gateway later, like PayPal, for instance. If you select Update at this point, 
then the symbol for your country will show in the place of the dollar sign. For instance, if you had selected Great Britain, then the dollar sign will change to the pound sterling sign for the currency. Next, select the currency sign location that is customary for your currency. Press Update again to save all the changes. That completes the initial settings for the general page. Select the Shipping tab in the setting panel. Now we'll configure the shipping options. If you're selling digital downloads, then set Use Shipping to No. Otherwise, leave it at Yes and enter the local poster code in the line below. Under Shipping Modules, we will select Flat Rate and click the Update button. Then click the Edit button on the flat rate line. This will show the flat rate table on the right. Enter your shipping rates. For free shipping, enter a zero. If you're not shipping to a region, then leave that field blank. These shipping charges will be added at checkout and will not show with the item. Click the Update button to save all changes. You will use the same process for the weight rate and the table rate. There are also some shipping plugins that are written for WPE Commerce that can be used if you need more flexibility in your shipping. Now for the payment options. Click on the payment options tab in the setting panel. WPE Commerce has seven default options available. Four of them are for PayPal. PayPal standard payment is one of the easiest to configure, so we'll be using that for our store. You'll need a business PayPal account set up to use this PayPal option. Select PayPal Payment Standard and click the Update button. In the right column, select PayPal Payment Standard from the drop-down menu and enter your username. This is your PayPal ID, which is usually an email address you use to open your account. If you want to use a test site for PayPal, then you'll need to get a PayPal Sandbox account. This is easy and free, and it allows you to test all your checkout and processing functions with Play Money before you go live. To get a PayPal Sandbox account, navigate to https colon backslash backslash developer dot paypal dot com and click on the Sign Up Now button. Enter the name you want for the account and a valid email address. The login information will be sent to this email account and should not be the one you use for your PayPal account. Enter a password and select the security question and key in an answer. Click the Agree and Submit button. You'll receive an email at the address you use to sign up. Click on the link to activate the account. Log into the account and click the Create a Pre-configured Account. This will take you to the Create a Sandbox Test Account page. It is on this page that you enter the information for the Sandbox account. Select the country and account type as Seller. You can create more than one account for testing buyer or seller. Enter a password. You can even add Play Money to a Play Credit Card account to test yourself as a buyer. If you're not creating a buyer account, Click the No Radio button on the bank account, then click the Create Account. On the next page is the information you'll use in the WP eCommerce PayPal field. Copy the email address for the account and paste it in the Username field and key in this URL in the URL field. Click the Update button. You can now test your payments in the PayPal Sandbox. The sandbox is identical to the PayPal operation, but you are spending play money. You can also use the sandbox for the PayPal Payments Pro account. 
Now all we need is a product to test the operation of the store. Navigate to Store Products. On the right column is the Add Products section. In order to create a product, you'll need the product name, price, and category. Although there is other information that is vital to a well-run store, a product can be created with just these three fields. We will be selling a copy of War and Peace for $39.99 and we'll use the example category since we've not added any categories and we're testing the site. After you enter the product information, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Add New Product button. Then go to your store and click on Product Page and you can see the product added. Click on the Add to Cart button. Since we haven't finished configuring the store, not much will change on the screen. But if you navigate to Checkout, you'll see the product in the shopping cart. You can fill out the billing information now and click the Make Purchase and the PayPal screen will appear. If you've set up a buyer account in the Test Sandbox, then you can complete the transaction by entering the seller account email and password. You can also test with the credit card information supplied in the test account. You'll receive an email about a sale. And if you want to see the email for the test site, then click on the test email under test accounts in the PayPal sandbox. If all goes well, you now have a functional store that can be configured to the way you want.